Hello again, and welcome back to Seize the Adventure. I haven't exactly done a video that just took you around and showed you all the components of the van and just briefly explained what is going on. So that is something that I would like to do as well as just kind of provide you with some insight on what's going on in the Seize the Adventure universe. So here it is, this is my 1997 Dodge Ram B2500 camper van build. It was once a wheelchair van that was neglected sitting in a field, zero clear coat. So first of all, we went ahead and painted it with a Duraback 18 bed liner paint job and this freaking came out awesome. I don't know if I have really talked about the paint since the videos. I had a hard time with the product originally. Could have been human error. We never came to conclusion on that. But Duraback ended up sending me more paint and it just came out awesome. It's super durable. I've taken it through tree branches, through some gnarly terrain, and it is not scratched whatsoever. So that's the first exterior thing that we did. We did a Durback 18 paint job on this van. Next up on the exterior, we threw on some open country all-terrain tires. Next up, we have 200 watts of solar up on the roof by Renogy. These panels have been excellent. Renogy provides all of the brackets, all the self-tapping screws, and the product itself has been super efficient. It provided me with plenty of solar and I can't complain whatsoever. We also have a max fan on the roof of the van as well. And again, fantastic product. I would like to let you guys know that everything that you see in this video will be linked down in the description below. So if you're interested, you could go ahead and pick up these exact same products on Amazon and have them shipped to your door. Next up, we have our six by eight foot awning. This pulls out and you have an excellent outdoor space where you can cook food, relax, and truly enjoy being outdoors. Moving on to the interior of the van, the bread and butter of my YouTube channel is putting these cedar planks up and creating these log cabin style vans. I just think it provides you with the most comfortable feeling when you're parked up next to a river. It's raining here in the Pacific Northwest. There's nothing like being in this log cabin feeling van. So when you enter in from the side door, the first thing you're going to come across is this awesome little bar sink that we put in to our butcher block countertops. I wanted to make this kind of an island separated from the other countertop because it's a lot easier to bring in the water and put it directly in here nice and close to the side door as well as the outdoor shower feature which consists of you just opening the door flipping this around pulling it out and under and you can have an outdoor shower super useful the sink setup is pretty simple what it consists of is two seven gallon aquatainers one fresh water, one gray water, as well as a 12 volt pump here in the back. I found it easier to just keep things simple and keep the van as light as possible. We don't need 20 gallons of water for the types of trips that we do, but that is something that I would consider in the future, just upgrading the water storage and creating something that you can really go off grid for multiple days, weeks. And all of these cabinets are handmade with, you know, relatively cheap plywood, but I think it functions how it should. It looks really nice. I painted it with a gray paint that, you know, kind of matches the aesthetic of the entire van. So I say overall, this was a major success. I really enjoy how this came out. Moving on from the sink, we have a tablet mount that we hang a tablet on to watch movies and whatnot, as well as the 12 volt dimmable light switch. These are 12 volt LED puck lights. You'll see them in a lot of van builds on YouTube. They are super easy to wire up and so far they work excellent. I went with the kind of more yellow looking ones rather than the white. Uh, I feel like the yellow really goes along with the wood and it's more cozy. I think the white is kind of too sterile looking for me. So moving on over, we have windows that go throughout the entire space of this van. And that really opens up the area as well as kind of gives you a flare space if you're a little bit taller and you can fit side to side perfectly because of these windows. 
So these windows also had these awesome little shades from the very first conversion. And I repurposed them because, well, they go along with the aesthetic, all the gray in the van, and they work super well. Granted, they don't keep out a bunch of light, but it's just enough to provide you with a little bit of privacy to change and these sorts of things. These windows also have a little sliding function down at the bottom where you can open it up and have a screen. You can also slide the screen completely out of the way as well if you needed to run a cord through here or something. What's really nice about this is there's a window on each side of the bed and essentially what you can do is open both of them and the max fan in the roof will pull so much air right over the top of the bed where you're sleeping and it's super comfortable and cozy. Speaking of the bed, we have a queen size RV mattress that I added this mattress topper to. Underneath the bed is where bulk of the storage is. I put these little bungees on there so nothing can slide through. Here we have a little bit of a control station so this inverter switch powers the refrigerator. That's the only thing hooked up to the inverter. We have two USB 12 volt ports as well as our diesel heater controller. If you're interested in winter camping, I would highly suggest getting a diesel heater. I previously would use a buddy heater and it would create so much condensation, probably will lead to mold and it's very dangerous to use in an enclosed space. So if you're looking to do winter camping, check out the diesel heater I have down in the description. It's super cheap and it was relatively easy to install. Plus it heats this small space so incredibly easily. It's very efficient as well. It barely uses any fuel. So go ahead and pick yourself up a diesel heater if you want to stay warm this winter. We got this beautiful looking butcher block countertop for this van build. And I think it matches the walls as well as the floor perfectly. Speaking of the floor, this was actually a free flooring that I got from Facebook Marketplace. So I guess a really helpful key when you're looking to do a van build is as you're building everything out, search all the marketplaces, search, let go, these sorts of things and find things that are used and you can repurpose. That's kind of a big part of keeping the budget super low is getting creative and you know, using your skill set to make something that is a little bit cheaper. The most recent modification that I've done to the van is alter this cabinet space. Uh, I just essentially made everything a little bit shorter because the chair couldn't recline all the way and that was a problem for me. So essentially I cut off maybe five inches or so on this end of it, took off this face because I didn't think that was necessary really. And then I had to shorten this as well to be able to bring the fridge in and you really can't tell, it looks the same, but um, it's actually a little bit nicer, I think. It's a lot more square, and I really like the open face. We have our AC little mini fridge here with loads of stickers from a whole bunch of adventures. So that brings me to the next topic of this video, and this is kind of why I wanted to document the van for the last time. Somebody is coming to check this van out and potentially bring it home. Now, I'm sad to bring that up and I will miss this van greatly, but this opportunity is to continue this cycle, start a new adventure, start a new build, go in a new direction, and continue evolving and diversifying our skill set. This is what Seize the Adventure is all about. It's about the next opportunity. It's about the next skill to learn. It's about the next build to take on. And I have to say, I'm excited for it, but I'm sad to see this one go. So we will see what happens. The potential buyers are coming right now down from Seattle and they're gonna look over the van. They've already sent me a deposit because they really enjoyed the pictures that they saw. And I'm really looking forward for this van to be on its next adventure. And uh, essentially it was sitting in a empty lot, completely sun faded. And 
going to never be really driven again. And what I did was give this van an entire new life. And these folks are gonna take this up to the Seattle area and it's going to be on a new set of adventures, which I think is super cool. I mean, this van is 26 years old. Being able to repurpose and reuse this big hunk of metal that was destined for the graveyard really makes me feel like I'm doing the right thing in the long run. So this brings me to the part of the video where I turn it back to you. What do you want to see next? I'm kind of in the line of maybe getting a high roof van, like a Sprinter Transit Promaster and going big. And that's what I said about this van. This van was going big from the Astro van. One more route that we could go in is to build out my Toyota 4Runner. I have a 2021 Toyota 4Runner and there's definitely not any camper builds of those that are to the degree that I would like to go. So that's also another option that could be something very unique and super different. What do you want to see next? So this is where I will depart for now. I will pick the camera back up if we sell the van. If we don't sell it, I'm perfectly all right with it. We will continue on and go on another adventure. But if we do end up selling it, the world is our oyster and we could start something new, something fresh, something exciting. Thank you.